Hey everybody, I can't believe this experiment actually worked, but by golly, it did. And for even thinking to try this, I blame the form backyardchickens.com because it was immediately after I put my egg incubator up into storage, telling myself that I wasn't going to hatch anything this year, I was just gonna focus on my garden, which turned out to be a lie. I came across all of these threads where people were talking about trying to hatch eggs from the grocery store. Now these threads all had varying levels of success, more failures than anything, of course. The main issue with trying to hatch a grocery store egg, of course, is gonna be fertilization because these commercial egg producers, they're not gonna pay to keep a rooster around when they're not necessary for their hens to lay eggs. What really piqued my interest though, were all these people reporting that at their local Trader Joe's, they were finding egg cartons that were labeled as fertile. Now, of course, given that it's the internet, every one of these posts had plenty of naysayers giving all the reasons why these eggs would never hatch, whether they're fertilized or not. It's not gonna work. They'll be too old by the time you get them. They're not gonna survive refrigeration. They'll never hatch. And you can't tell a crazy chicken lady that you can't do something and expect her to not say challenge accepted, which is exactly what happened. So off we went to our local Trader Joe's, which actually wasn't very local at all. It was actually quite the drive to get there. I had never been to a Trader Joe's before. So we looked around and unfortunately they did not sell the cartons labeled as fertile. But undeterred, I didn't wanna drive all that way and not try to get some eggs. So we went ahead and we grabbed three dozen eggs and I got one of three different types that they sold. I opted for all Trader Joe brand uh, because the fertile eggs were Trader Joe brand. So I didn't get like the, I think they had like Vital Farms, um, some other brands there. But so we got one dozen of pasture raised, which are large brown eggs. Um, we got cage free Trader Joe's. These are white. And then we also got cage free brown. I was super bummed that they didn't sell the fertile eggs and I just did not think anything was gonna come out of this experiment. So not wanting to waste three dozen eggs, I grabbed one out of each carton and I cracked it open to look for the bullseye, which would tell me that they were fertilized or not. And most of the eggs that I opened up, they did not look like they were fertilized at all. But there was one that when I looked back at the footage that I took, I was on the fence, I went back and forth and finally I just decided to go ahead and try it. So I treated these eggs just like I do any other shipped egg. I got the incubator up and running so it could stabilize overnight and I let the eggs sit out at room temperature so they could come up to at least room temperature um, since they had been refrigerated at the store. The incubator that I used was my trusty IncuView XL which is a cabinet style along with the humidity kit. I've had this incubator for years now and I love it, but unfortunately I don't think Incubator Warehouse sells them anymore, which is a bummer. As I always do with shipped eggs, I candle before I put them into the incubator to check for cracks. And I was amazed because the air cells on these eggs were actually in better shape than any of the shipped eggs I've received <laughs> over the past two years. Thanks a lot, USPS. So when you're incubating eggs, typically the recommendation is to try to incubate eggs that are less than 10 days old. Uh, once you get to about 10-ish days, viability starts to drop. So a nice thing on egg cartons is there will be a Julian date and 018 is the Julian date for this um, carton. And what that is, is that is the day of the year that these eggs were packaged. So I wrote down on each carton how many days had passed from the day that it was packaged to the day that I set it in the incubator. So for the pasture raised eggs, it was eight days between the day they were packaged and the day that they went in my incubator. So that's a pretty good turnaround time for those. For the cage free white, it was 15 days. For the cage free brown, it was 13 days. Another thing that's on the side of the carton is it's gonna tell you what facility those eggs came from. So these all came from P628. Now, fast forward four days, my crappy phone camera is not gonna pick this up, but I about lost my mind to see teensy tiny little veins developing. There was definitely development in three of the eggs and in a fourth, it looked like there was a blood ring. And what a blood ring is, is where the egg starts to develop and then dies later. Um, that's what it looked like to me. And all four of these eggs were the pasture raised eggs. So there was no development in either of the cage free dozens. 
So I was so excited that there was actually development because I wasn't expecting there to be any at all. But I knew with only four eggs developing, odds were they probably weren't gonna make it to hatch. So back to Trader Joe's we went. <laughs> and um, this time, knowing that only four out of the dozen were fertile, um, I went ahead and I bought four dozen more pasture raised, four dozen more cage-free brown eggs, and I also grabbed a dozen uh, cage-free extra large brown eggs. So for all of these eggs, we did the exact same process as before. Uh, we let them sit out overnight, we marked them, and we put them in the incubator the next day. And we crossed our fingers for at least a few to be developing. So let's fast forward four days again, and I candled everyone and to my surprise, the original four were all still developing beautifully. The one that I thought was a blood ring actually wasn't. It was developing and still very much alive. So I was thrilled with that. All the rest from that first batch were not developing at all. So those got tossed. And I candled all of the eggs that we had just bought for the second batch and not a single one was developing, which I was bummed about because we made that trip all the way to Trader Joe's for nothing. But I was still thrilled to have the original four. A few days later, I candled the eggs in batch number two. Again, I confirmed that not a single one was developing. So out of nine dozen, absolutely nothing, uh, which is okay. It's part of the experiment, but those all got tossed as well. Fast forward again to day 18. This is lockdown day. And what this is, is this is three days before the date that they're supposed to hatch, where you stop turning them so that they can get into position to hatch. I always candle on lockdown day. That way I can mark where the air cell is so I can guess which side of the egg they're gonna start pipping at. And also I do my last check to make sure all the eggs are still alive. And again, much to my surprise, all four were still looking great. Uh, they were moving around and everything looked totally normal. So I marked the air cells and we put them in the lockdown tray at the top of my incubator. So hatch day, day 21, came and went. And it's really unusual in my incubator for eggs to hatch early or late. They're usually right on time. And so to see nothing happening on that day was really discouraging. But again, guys, I didn't have huge expectations for this experiment at all. Um, I wasn't seeing the eggs rocking. I wasn't hearing any chirping, um, no pipping. So assuming that they had all just been late quitters, I went ahead and I went to candle them to check and see. And much to my surprise, the first egg that I grabbed when I went to turn it around, I noticed it was a little bit stuck to the tray and there it was, the pip hole. So I very quickly set it back. I put the pip on the top so I could watch the progress. So I proceeded to spend the rest of the day obsessively checking the incubator every five minutes and there was no progress at all. Normally within a few hours of the pip, they will start to do what's called a zip. And that is where they will start breaking the egg in a line all the way around the egg shell um, until they're able to push it open and free themselves from the egg. And this was not happening. So finally nighttime rolled around and it was time for me to go to bed. No progress had been made at all from that point. So I did not have high hopes for waking up to a chick, but Again, <laughs> much to my surprise, we woke up to a adorable little yellow chick that had hatched and he looked totally healthy. Uh, no issues whatsoever. I was absolutely amazed. Again, I was just completely shocked that <laughs> everything worked out. Now the other three eggs, unfortunately, they did not make it. I gave them extra time and I candled multiple times to make sure, but they all were late quitters, which was such a bummer. But it just shows how much of a survivor our little friend Joe is. Now, of course, I have no idea what breed Joe is or if it's even a male or a female at this point. But if I had to guess, I'd say most commercial egg producers probably only use breeds that are sex linked and a high production breed like an Isa Brown. And if that's the case, Joe most likely is a male since he is mostly just yellow. He does have a little bit of brown um, markings on his back, but um, mostly a light yellow color. So if it is a sex link, most likely it's gonna be a male. Also, of course, there is the law of egg incubation that says if you only have one egg hatch, 100% of the time, it's a rooster. <laughs> now, regardless of whether Joe turns out to be a pullet or a cockerel, He's gonna live his entire natural life here on our homestead just as a pet. 
Now chickens are very sociable flock animals, so Joe hatching on his own did produce a new dilemma that we had to solve, which is he needed some friends. Uh, we can't put him out with an adult chicken because they will bully him, they won't adopt him. I don't have any that are broody right now or anything uh, because it's February. So we have to get him some chicks that are the same age as him. So the next road trip was a late night trip to Rural King to get him some friends. Now, when you're buying chicks at Rural King, they have a six chick minimum. And luckily my sister needed some new pullets as well. So after perusing all of the bins and noticing that they are all horribly mixed together to where you, it's very difficult to differentiate what breed is which. I chose hopefully three barred rocks for my sister. That's her favorite breed. And hopefully three prairie bluebell eggers for me. I've wanted some colorful egg layers for a long time, but um, now I finally had the excuse to get some. So those were the ones I chose. And they were the only colorful egg layers that I was fairly confident I could pick out of all the other chicks in that bin. So the brooder got set up and Joe, who at this point had spent all day in the incubator getting dried off and mostly fluffy, he was now ready to meet his new friends. Now, of course, at first they were all a little bit scared with their new surroundings, but by the next day they were happily pecking around, eating their food and drinking well. Um, there was a little bit of a poopy butt going on, but um, that is expected, especially for chicks that were shipped from a hatchery. Um, but overall, everyone looked really healthy and looked really good. So these guys are gonna stay here in our heated barn in their brooder until they are fully feathered. And then they'll be able to go outside to their new flocks. Uh, the barred rocks will go to my sisters to join her Orpingtons and the Prairie Bluebells and Joe will get to go out with our free rangers. So there you have it, you guys. Despite all the odds stacked up against us, we've proven that it is actually possible to hatch an egg from a mainstream grocery store. Obviously, getting one chick out of 144 eggs, <laughs> the odds are not great. But if you wanted to try this yourself, um, I would definitely recommend you stay away from the brands that use like battery cages. The likelihood of there being a rooster involved in those scenarios is pretty much zero. You're gonna have a lot better luck with companies that say they use small family farms and especially ones that have setups that are pasture raised or free ranged. Um, so you're gonna wanna look for those labels on the packaging. But even with all of that, it's still completely luck of the draw because my store apparently has at least one supplier that has a rooster, but clearly not all of them because the vast majority of the eggs weren't fertilized at all. So yeah guys, we are just gonna have to see what he turns out to be breed wise. Leave your guesses down in the comments down below. I would love to read them. Uh, luckily within just a few days, he should start growing some wing feathers. So we will be able to at least tell what color those are. I'll be sure to post some follow-up videos as Joe grows and I'll show you guys what he turns out to look like. Um, so if you'd like to see those videos, be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this experiment. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!